University of Kansas, talking about variations in bee responses to thermal stress. Um, hi, Clement. Uh, thank you, uh, everyone. Um, I don't know if you can hear me. We can hear you. Yes. Okay. Well, thank you, uh, Clement, for the for the introduction, and and I'm happy to to be here and to <clears throat> be listening to great uh, work and amazing talks. Um, 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 this is a, a work that I have been um, conducting with uh, several people, so I'm just presenting as a as a group, um, but mainly with Kenan uh, Oyen. Um, climate change is expected to increase the temperature, to alter precipitation patterns to increase the concentration of, of CO2 and also exposure to UV light. And it's also expected to increase the, the frequency as well as the intensity of climatic events such as heat wave and cold spells. And more importantly, um, these effects are not going to be equally around the globe. For instance, organisms that are um, living in the tropics are expected to, to, to have a, a greater effect, negative effect uh, of climate change than those that are in other latitudes. Um, we also know that, that pollination is a very important uh, ecosystem services that have been, I don't have to mention that in this context here, but it's also very vulnerable to climate change because um, it requires the, the, the partnership between plants and an insect, a, a pollinator. And each uh, partner will respond differently to these changes of temperature and humidity. This is uh, this illustration just shows some um, of the um, changes or effects in this partnership uh, in pollination due to climate change in terms of the mismatches of the, the spatial distribution, uh, phenology or temporal mismatch, morphology, and, and also some of the behavior. So these bring us to, to two questions. Um, one is what range of temperatures can be tolerated? And second, if we can make any predictions given the diversity of bees in terms of their morphology, um, here body size, coloration, um, hairiness or pilosity, um, as well as their biology. We have bees that are nesting in the ground, in the sticks, uh, some, of, some of these are social. Um, that is telling us that they are exposed to different thermal environments. So, <clears throat> One of the aspects that I have been interested in terms of the, the bee uh, thermal tolerance um, is the thermal limits. And these are basically the upper and the lower uh, temperatures that they can tolerate, the maximum and the minimum temperatures that they can tolerate. Um, I, in this talk, I have been using those as the city minimum here and city max that have been abbreviated as, those, as such. Um, when you look online for or any uh, do a, a, ref, a literature review on the topic, there is no much about it. And this is a map showing the number of publications worldwide. And the first publication that I found on this on this aspect is on 2014. And in the last eight years, we have only um, about 10 publications. One was published a few days ago, and assessing the thermal limits for 30 species. So this is less than one percent of the bee diversity um, globally. <clears throat> and most of this work are assessing only the upper um, uh, thermal limits of city max. And as you can see, it is heavily located in the United States, and there is one in Mexico and Europe. So there is nothing else in the tropics. So um, this is um, interesting because we know that thermal limits might be influenced by my, my myriad of factors, and this includes the evolutionary history, the geographic and temporal gradient, so altitude, latitude, uh, time of the day, <clears throat> also the biology, nesting, sociality, as well as some environmental stressors that here we, we include parasitism, nutrition, pesticides, etc. Some, uh, some of these stressors that are very important in the context of climate change because climate change will increase the, their effect on, the, on, on a given organism. So in the last um, uh, three years, um, and mostly during the pandemic, I started to explore these uh, thermal limits using this equipment. There are different ways of, of um, assessing that, but the way that I've been um, using is um, basically applying um, an increase or decrease of, of temperature at, at a given rate. I have been using 0 0.5 uh, 
Celsius uh, degrees per minute. So this is a, uh, a moderate um, a speed of change of this temperature in the experiments. And what, it, what, it is, what, it, um, what I do is just collect the bees from the field, put in this, in this machine that can be uh, taken to any, anywhere in the, in the field, and, and then uh, apply these uh, low and high temperatures and measure the point in which the bees start um, basically uh, displaying those uh, spasms all uh, showing same signs of curling. So basically, they're getting um, cold, right? And this is the 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 basically the, the temperature that I'm going to be showing in in this talk. Um, so what I have found on this, um, I looked at some um, bumblebees in in Colombia in the tropics, and uh, so there are 40 species and 19 species of of stingless bees at two elevations. And on the in blue, you can this is the the figures related to the the uh, city minimum and in red are those related to the city max. Um, so in both um, cases, city minimum decreases with increasing elevation. So these that are in at high elevations tend to tolerate um, lower temperatures than those that are in lower elevations. And for city max, there is no change. So same, same city max, uh, same heat tolerance um, across elevations. Now, um, uh, I tried to repeat the same experiments in Greece, and this is, I studied a community um, of, of bees of 70 species, uh, 30 genera in, 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 on an island called Lesbos, which is one of the most diverse places for bees in the Mediterranean region. And I found a similar pattern to that um, um, in which the, the city, min, city minimum decreases with elevation and no change with elevation for city max. Now, in terms of the temporal gradients, I have been able to study um, uh, bees that forage early in the morning or late in the afternoon. So these are considered crepuscular or nocturnal bees. Um, on the right, on the left, you have an example of the species of carpenter bees. And on the right, this is from Greece. And on the right, um, species, uh, two species of, of uh, nocturnal sweat bees in Panama in comparison to diurnal bees, in this case, stingless bees and orchid bees. And, what I found is that nocturnal bees, as expected, um, display a lower city max. And in the case of, of, of sweat bees, also a lower city minimum than diurnal bees, which means that these nocturnal bees are more at risk of, of heat wave you know, than uh, diurnal bees in general. Now, there are, um, um, there are different morphological traits that I wanted to explore, and I have been able to explore some of these traits in some groups. And here I've been using uh, body size uh, um, and as a proxy body size intertegular distance, uh, velocity, and here's the maximum hair length for the, in the thorax and the integumental color. And here I just may, uh, va um, measure the lightness value, so how light or dark they are. <clears throat> and the relationships for body size um, seems to vary among species, among uh, clades, and also among communities. Here on top is the, the results for stingless bees and below for bumblebees. So for stingless bees, um, an increase of body size, um, um, the city minimum increases with an increase of body size, but the opposite trend is found for, for bumblebees. Now for city max, there is no effect of body size in bumblebees, but there is an effect uh, for, for body size in stingless bees. Now, the community level in Greece, um, what we found is that the um, city minimum decreases with uh, an increase of body size, so just like bumblebees, and no change in uh, city max with an increase of body size, just like bumblebees in, in general. Um, now, in terms of the of the velocity, here the responses are are, are diverse, are different. So for for stingless bees, there is an increase of city minimum as the length of hair increases, but the opposite trend occurs um, in a, at the community level. Now, for city max, there is no effect um, at the community level for city max, but there is an increase of city max. Um, as, an, as we observe an increase in the body of the hair length for stingless bees. Now for integumental color, 
I have been able only to, to measure these uh, for stingless bees. And here, basically at high elevations, bees um, that are darker tend to have a lower city minimum and as well a lower um, uh, city max. However, these morphological traits, at least for stingless bees, only explain less than 10% of the thermal limits variance. So the contribution are not very strong, which means that there are factors that are more important in these thermal limits. Now, in terms of the stressors, one of the, the most interesting, uh, in my opinion, aspects um, of this, of the, of the work that I have done so far is with the, with the uh, neonicotinoids. It seems like when we have the idea that neonicotinoids are producing, are, uh, uh, are uh, doing a, a negative effect on bees in many aspects, but when we uh, feed fed bees with sublethal doses of those two uh, neonicotinoids, we observed an increase of the thermal tolerance. So from two to five Celsius degrees in, um, um, in the treatment bees in comparison to the control. Now, um, we know that there are only a few works and I mentioned only eight work or 10 works, uh, 10 studies um, measuring thermal limits, but they all vary in some of the most important um, methodological aspects. One of them is the, the uh, rate of temperature used in these essays. We have uh, some work using 0 0.1 Celsius per minute, some others are using 1.5. So I tried uh, recently to test some of the methodological um, aspects and see how the, some bees responded in this case was honeybees. And we know that the greater the change of temperature, the lower the city minimum and the lower, the higher the city max. So basically the, the bees are able to tolerate more heat and cold if this uh, rate of change are, are, um, are faster. And this obviously is only for honeybees and bombos in patients in North America and might not be able to be extrapolated to other um, species. So um, in conclusion, um, well, this, this um, um, I think what we are seeing is that the, the, these bee responses to thermal strains depends, depends on many factors. Um, some bi biotic, some abiotic. Um, something that I didn't mention was the, the for instance, the, um, the social behavior of the nesting. Some of these may vary depending on the species, clades and community, but we know so little uh, still. And in general, there is a stronger response in the city minimum than city max, which is basically agrees with um, some of the trends or the, the patterns that we have observed in other organisms. And finally, um, I wanted to point out that we need more people working on these aspects of the, of the thermal tolerance of bees. As an example here on the lower right, you see the number, the amount of work that they have been, they have been done on, on ants. So there are a lot, lot of work going on. We still need um, a lot more work on bees. And I just wanted to, to thank all the, the collaborators in all these places, as well as the, the agency that have been funding this work. Thank you. And I'm, I think I have some time for, for questions. Great, thanks very much. Um, don't, uh, Carolina Gomez says, great talk. Are you planning to analyze how the cuticular hydrocarbons change in response to temperature and altitude? Um, that was, that's a, a great question. I haven't thought about it yet. You know, there are other things that I'm trying to, to, to look. For instance, I know that, the, that there is a correlation between uh, the desiccation tolerance and the city max. And what I have found is that um, diurnal bees, uh, for instance, they, they lose water more quickly than, than nocturnal bees. I don't know if there's something related to that, um, but one explanation that that I that I have is that they may be able to transpire, you know, uh, more, so they can they can cool down and, and receive uh, higher temperatures, you know. But yeah, that's a great question, and I don't, yeah. If you want to do it and and you want to collaborate, that would be great. You know? So a quick question from yes. uh, Susan Waters: Could you discuss briefly in one minute the physiological mechanisms involved in coping with max versus min temperatures? Yeah, so the, 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 what, um, the, 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 the shortest explanation is the, the, the release of, of chick hot, chick hot, uh, hot chick, no, uh, stress proteins, basically. Um, that this is something that the, that 
it had been um, documenting so many organisms in bees. I don't think we have any any work done on bees, but they, there is some mechanisms, you know, that they they are releasing these proteins to to basically to man, to compensate for the physiological stress. Great. Well, with that, I'd like to thank all the speakers from this session and pass it back to Victoria. And for those of us who are in a zone where it's lunchtime, um, happy lunch. Other than those of you in Europe and Asia, happy dinner. See ya. Yes, so 